Good day to you. I'm Andre Olafir, a chaplain with the Veterans Association called the Dogs of War in South Africa. I want to talk to you about obedience today. And you might say, wow, what the obedience? I'm sure that most people won't listen or look even at this video based purely just on the title or topic. There are many reasons that I think this might happen, but allow me just to mention three. Firstly, by implication, if you are not obedient, then there will be consequences, maybe even punishment. Not many people want to be told what to do or not to do. And thirdly, uh, it has become more popular to accept fake news and even to spread fake news rather than the truth of God's infallible word. Our Lord and Savior wants a personal relationship with us. And his manual, the Bible, tells us all about this. He is a holy and righteous God. He is fair, just, merciful and loving. His goodness and loving kindness endures forever. Why would you not want a relationship with Him? Why would you not want to be obedient to your Creator? Why would you not want to spend time and read the manufacturer's manual? If we will walk with Him, obey His word, and follow the direction and leading of the Holy Spirit, then we will enjoy the close relationship that we desire and relish the benefits of that relationship. I'm going to give you five short reasons why obedience will draw you closer to the Lord. Reason one, when you are obedient, you can walk with God. No one can really walk with God without being obedient. There are three examples that I can mention to you quickly. If you go and look at Enoch, that walked closely with the Lord for more than 300 years. You can read this in Genesis 5, verse 22. Noah, uh, he was found righteous and the Lord saved him in the ark. Him, him and his family, Genesis 6, verse 6. Uh, Adam was obedient before the fall. He listened and he did everything what the Lord told him to do. You can read that in Genesis 2, verse uh, seven. Then reason number two, when you are obedient, you obey God's voice. It is important not just to go through life as if you are not a Christian or not loved by the Lord. You see, there are many kind people in the world who do not have this relationship with the Lord and therefore cannot hear his voice. But if you obey the Lord and you follow God and you obey his voice, there are privileges that belong to his children. We can know his voice and the nature through his word, his Holy Spirit. The word says, my sheep know my voice. Here's an important uh, scripture for you. Deuteronomy 4 verse 5 and 6 says, Look, I now teach you these decrees and regulations just as the Lord my God commanded me, so that you may obey them in the land you are about to enter and occupy. Obey them completely. And you will display your wisdom and intelligence among the surrounding nations. When we follow God's voice, we will help others see his wisdom and hopefully draw them to him as well. Let me give you a third reason. When you are obedient, you will be blessed. The scriptures confirm this over and over and over. God's word promises that if you will obey him, blessings will follow. Let me give you three scriptures. Joshua 1 and verse 8. Study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Isaiah 1 and verse 19. If you will only obey me, you will have plenty to eat. John 13 14 verse 21, those who accept my commandments and obey them are the ones who love me. And because they love me, my Father will love them and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Reason number four, when you are obedient, you're choosing God's best because he created us. He knows what is best for us. God's love for us is clear from the sacrifice he arranged through Jesus Christ. And by the power of his Holy Spirit, he drew us to him. We need to walk in obedience, but he has given us a choice. If we choose not to follow him, to walk in disobedience, then we walk outside of that blessing. It is our choice, yours and mine, one he has given to all his children throughout history. 
And, and, and look what the word says. The word says in Isaiah 1 verse 18 to 20, Come now, let's settle this, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, I will make them as white as snow. Though they were as red as crimson, I will make them as white as wool. If you will only obey me, and you will have plenty to eat. You see, you may choose to blatantly disobey the Lord by rebelling against him and his word. But there's active disobedience, there's passive disobedience. But let's not go into that right now. I would rather in, encourage you to go and study God's word. You might even say, but how can it be held accountable for things we don't know? You might even ask that question. We can be held accountable because God has given us his manual for living, his word, the Bible. Reason number five, when you are obedient, you trust in God to be God. This is so important. Obeying God means moving aside and allowing God, His Word, His Holy Spirit and His way of operating to move into our lives. It means trusting, having faith that He will be true to His Word. When we obey, we don't try to control our lives and the situations around us but by our own human strength. Instead, we focus on the Lord by keeping Him and His Word before our eyes and allowing Him to have His way and trusting that he will fulfill his promises. We cannot claim to love God without obeying him and his word. So let's commit to obey him with heartfelt love and show appreciation. And I know that the churches of today uh, think that by sacrificing time and by following programs that you are obeying God. Let me, let me close by giving you an example. And I'm taking this example from 1 Samuel 15, where the key verse is, obedience is better than sacrifice. So let's play a little bit of a game. Just, just go along with me. Uh, to make the value of obedience just as practical as possible, let's, let's pretend the following. Let's pretend that you work for me. In fact, you are my executive assistant in a rapidly growing company. As owner of the company, I'm interested in expanding overseas. To pull this off, I make plans to travel abroad and start a new branch over there. I make all the arrangements, I take my family with me, and off I go for the next couple of months, maybe a year. I leave you in charge of the, 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 the company in the country where I left. I tell you that I will write regular mails to you and I'll send you instructions and direction what to do. After my return, after a couple of months, I've, after I've sent a lot of emails and so on, I arrive back and I, when I get there, I see there's a lot of grass growing outside, weeds have grown, there are windows broken. I walk into the receptionist's office and there she's doing her nails, chewing gum, listening to her favorite radio station. I then look around and notice waste baskets are overflowing, the carpet hasn't been vacuumed for weeks, and nobody seems concerned that the owner has returned. I ask, where are you? And someone in the crowd lounge area points down the wall and yells, I think he's down there. Disturbed, I move in that direction and bump into you as you are finished a chess game with the sales manager. I ask you to step into my office, which has been temporarily turned into a television room for watching afternoon soap operas. I ask you, what in the world is going on? You say, what do you mean, Andre? And I say to you, well, look at this place. Didn't you get any of my letters and emails? Letters and emails? You might answer, yeah, sure, I got every one of them. As a matter of fact, Andre, we had a letter study every Friday night since you left. We have been divided into personal little small groups and discussed many of the things you wrote. Some of those things were really interesting. You'll be blessed to know that a few of us have actually memorized some of the sentences and paragraphs. One guy even memorized an entire letter or two. Great stuff in those letters, Andre. Okay, okay, I will say to you, you got my letters. You studied them, discussed and even memorized them. But then what did you do? You answer, huh? We didn't do anything. No, I certainly hope that you will examine your life based on the above and your obedience to the word of God, that you come to fully realize the power of freedom of choice that the Savior has given you and me. May I whisper, choose wisely. Allow me to close in prayer. Abba Father, we honor you and worship you. And Lord, we acknowledge that you are our creator. Lord, we acknowledge the word of God is the infallible word, the manufacturer's manual, so to speak, Lord. And Lord, help us to study your word. Help us to be obedient. Help us to use this precious gift of the free will that you have given us, Lord. I pray this in your precious name. Amen and amen. Stay blessed.